Hi, my name is Meeta Kumar. In this module, I continue our discussion on consumer theory. As mentioned in the previous module, consumer theory analyzes decisions made by consumers regarding what goods to buy and in what quantities. What a consumer buys depends on two things. One, what does the consumer want? And two, what can the consumer afford to buy? In this module, we examine the first question. How does the consumer decide what to buy and in how much quantities? Many theories have been offered to explain this. One of the oldest theories on how consumers decide what to buy and in what quantities is called the Marshallian Utility Analysis after the famous economist Alfred Marshall. We must understand that utility is different from usefulness. Marshallian utility analysis assumes that a consumer wants to get the maximum possible satisfaction from consuming various commodities that they can buy. We start with the notion that each commodity has some utility. We can define utility as the want satisfying power of a commodity. We believe that consumers consume a commodity only when it gives them satisfaction. We are not concerned really with whether the consumption of a commodity is good or bad for the consumer. Too much butter may be bad for one's health. But as long as the consumer wants to eat butter, butter is said to give her utility. Marginal utility analysis of demand is based on the basic premise that utility can be measured. Not only can it be measured, it can be measured in cardinal numbers, numbers such as 1, 2, 3, etc. We could even define an imaginary unit for utility, say utils. Once we have done this, it is easy to see how much utility a consumer is getting from each unit she consumes. We believe that the consumer's utility generally increases from consuming more and more of a commodity. Adding up the utility that a consumer gets from consuming each unit of the commodity that she buys gives us total utility. Imagine that you want to have pizza. The intensity of wanting pizza is so high that the first bite into it makes you say, wow. Typically, as you go on having more and more pizza, you begin to feel full. So each extra bite gives you less satisfaction than the one before. Eventually, you may even begin to feel a little sick of pizza. This brings us to the conclusion that as we have more and more of a commodity, the satisfaction from each subsequent unit goes on diminishing. The table on your screen shows an example of this. Notice the utility from the second slice is less than that from the first, and that of the third slice is even less than that of the second. The utility from the fourth slice of pizza is actually zero. This means that the consumer does not get any utility from it. The total utility is increasing, but notice that it is increasing at a decreasing rate. The addition to total utility from consuming an extra slice of pizza is called marginal utility. In other words, marginal utility is the addition to total utility for each unit increase in consumption. The law of diminishing marginal utility states that as the consumption of a commodity increases, the utility derived from subsequent unit goes on decreasing. This law is based on certain assumptions. These are, one, that all units of the commodity are homogeneous. 
that is they are identical. Second, the time of consumption remains the same. In general, total utility and marginal utility are related thus. One, as the marginal utility goes on decreasing, the total utility goes on increasing as long as the marginal utility is positive, but it increases at a diminishing rate. When the marginal utility becomes zero, total utility reaches its maximum. After the marginal utility reaches zero, additional units of the commodity give negative satisfaction. Or, in other words, marginal utility becomes negative, so total utility starts falling down. We can state the relation between the total utility and marginal utility algebraically as follows. Marginal utility is the difference between total utility of the nth unit minus the total utility of the n minus 1th unit. Here, n is the unit of consumption under discussion and n minus 1 is the previous unit. This can also be rewritten as marginal utility is the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity which is Qx. Let us try an example. A consumer's total utility after consuming 6 units of a commodity is 25 utils and after consuming 7 units of a commodity is 29 utils. What is the marginal utility of the 7th unit of the commodity? The answer is 4 utils. The same consumer has a marginal utility of 2 units from consuming the 8th unit of this commodity. How much is his total utility from 8 units? The answer is the sum of 29, which he has got from the 7 units, plus 2 utils from the 8th unit, and that makes 31 utils in all. The most severe limitation of this approach is the assumption that satisfaction can be measured. Think about this. Can we really measure the satisfaction that we get from eating a pizza or a mango? or a banana. If utility cannot be measured, it would be difficult to give it a unit like utils. So measuring total utility and marginal utility becomes difficult. While we cannot measure utility, what we can do is rank goods in terms of the satisfaction they give us. So it is possible for me to say that I like mangoes more than bananas, or even more specifically, I could say that I like two mangoes as much as I like three bananas. Such an approach allows me to rank commodities in the order in which I like them without having to measure the utility of any individual unit of a commodity. It is usual to use this concept when trying to analyze consumers' decisions about what to buy. We shall study one such approach called the indifference curve approach in the next module based on this notion. To summarize what we've done in this lesson, we studied the meaning of utility and also the concepts of marginal and total utility. We also saw how the level of satisfaction from subsequent units goes on decreasing provided the units of consumption are homogeneous and the time of consumption remains the same or in other words consumption happens continually without a break. We will modify some of these concepts in the next module to study in different curves and continue our analysis of consumer theory. Thank you.